Ch okay, great. Thank you, Andrea and uh, Justin, for inviting me. And uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, you know, uh, I can see a couple of faces that I know, or I follow some of their posts. Uh, you know, Ben is here. Uh, you know, Ben's PowerShell skill is uh, definitely nowhere close to me. Chad is here. So, uh, you know, thanks for joining. So this is a talk that I haven't given before today. I'll be very upfront with you. I've been working hard to prepare this. Uh, I already have, I think, three or four places scheduled for giving this talk. That doesn't mean that I'm treating Andrea as a test ground. <laughs> I submitted in a few places because I wanted to force myself to learn. So I said, this will be a good way. And Andrea was the first one to, you know, choose me as a speaker. So that's how you get to, you know, listen to the first edition of this. Um, I, uh, so, you know, I'd love to see, you know, some comments, maybe if you have any expectation, I'm sure you read the abstract. Uh, but uh, throughout the presentation, I would be really, and you can give me raw feedback. You know, I've done this, uh, you know, probably not as much as Ben or others, but enough that uh, I can take uh, constructive criticism. I wouldn't cry after this. So just write it as is. If you feel like, you know, I should improve, uh, edit or whatever, right? I can, I can take that. Uh, as long as you just don't say I didn't like it and don't tell me that why not, right? Then I'm really at a loss. I, it's like no use for me. Um, I do not have any slides. Everything is done in Azure Data Studio. So in case if anyone is not familiar, um, uh, I'm not gonna talk much about it. This is a multi-platform tool. Uh, you can have different languages that you can use with this tool and you can use notebooks. So the advantage of a notebook as you are seeing one right now in the screen that I have text, I have pictures from your user group homepage um, uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, our uh, from Rochester Andy, but look, the hat looks similar, and uh, Andy also had that kind of shirt in uh, bigger events. So I couldn't make it up anyway. As you can see, that you know uh, you can format. I don't have code in this page because I just uh, put this as a landing page, but you will see I'll be using other PowerShell and T-SQL notebooks. Uh, you can also use it like a normal editor uh, for many different languages. Uh, so that's what I'll be using. So before I give any talk, I always try to make a case that why people should be spending, uh, you know, one hour from their busy schedule, right? All of you busy, people tired, people with COVID, you know, working from home, children, um, you know, home has become multi-purpose, right? You know, it's like a playground, a school and whatnot. So um, I've seen this, you know, I've been listening to this or hearing about this, but I really, like India said, I didn't pay much attention to this. Uh, but uh, if you do not know, there is a YouTube channel named Data Exposed. Uh, look it up. Um, you know, this is um, run by Microsoft employees, uh, primarily Anna Hoffman. So, and uh, she actually did a uh, almost an hour long session on this and brought in uh, three different uh, Microsoft engineers from the product team uh, to talk about this. And also and, um, Andrew Nelson, I might be misspelling, I'm, I know his last name is Nelson. The first name is probably uh, and Andrew Nelson or people call him Andy. Uh, he has a short talk of about probably 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so I watched those and then, uh, you know, I, I really found it useful. I'm actually using it at my workplace today. Uh, so I took some quote from there um, to share with you that whatever I can share, uh, so I don't break any rules. Uh, and uh, this has uh, gave us, uh, you know, some, some relief or, uh, some value. So I thought sharing this with the community will be a good one. And I haven't seen a talk uh, other than those two that I talked about in any user group, uh, not that I follow all the groups in the country, right? So I probably have missed it. Um, and, and that was the reason. So if you have a bigger uh, state of SQL servers, and when I say SQL server, it, do, it does cover uh, Azure Virtual Machines, uh, SQL Server on Azure VM, uh, and uh, Windows and Linux based. Uh, if you have a large state and you want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're all in compliance with the certain standard on many things, uh, this is a great tool. And I'm not saying that, you know, the, you cannot achieve this. Uh, you cannot achieve this without, you know, what I'm going to show you. You definitely can. But if Microsoft Tiger team, uh, you know, if, you're, if you know that team, um, you know, huge respect for them, like, you know, you know, people like, you know, Pedro Lopez used to be in that team. 
and many people so they wrote this right so you know for me you know why should i uh, you know try to what do you call this in english like reinvent the wheel right you know they wrote this uh, they put two powershell command in the sql server powershell module uh, it's all um, ready for us so i'd rather use that and you know uh, when tiger team put a recommendation they don't put it lightly right so uh, especially now Microsoft hosting millions of uh, uh, databases, SQL Server. Uh, so I, I'll take their recommendation. So using this, what I'm going to show you, you can automate this in your uh, workplace. And uh, especially if you're a consultant, if you are going to a new place or from place to place, right? Um, you know, this is from Microsoft, so they should not have any reservation, right? A lot of time, you know, even you know, I have heard people talking about like, you try to put, uh, you know, SP who is active bad mechanic or some of the bleeds stuff from, um, uh, you know, uh, some some companies uh, do have reservations and, and I can respect that, but this is from Microsoft. So you do not have that, um, um, you know, that issue. Um, so if you think that, you know, you, you have a larger state, you can use this and do some checks. Uh, this talk is for you. Uh, or, or, or hopefully you will find something out of this talk. So uh, there are about, you know, there's about 204 roles as of today. Um, you can automate this using PowerShell. You can also integrate with uh, DBA tools if you're uh, familiar with DBA tools, which is a community, um, you know, written um, uh, module from, uh, you know, Chrissy uh, from Europe. Um, you know, she, she lead that effort, a lot of people contributed, uh, you can, you can put that those two things together. And then you can write your own rules. You can edit those. Uh, you can disable, enable. There are a couple of things that I'll show you. Uh, I also put the environments that are supported here. I'm not going to read this uh, because at the end of this presentation, I'm going to upload everything to GitHub. I'll send a link to uh, uh, Andrea and Jonathan, and then they can share it with you. I do not see the reason of zipping up all and sending it to you because GitHub anybody can access and, and download it. So do not need to send another copy. Um, so I'll definitely do that uh, by tomorrow for sure. Um, and so you can download and um, so I'm not gonna read that. And uh, that's pretty much so. These are the some of the references that I used while I preparing while preparing this talk. Uh, the last two are the YouTube videos that I was talking about. So this one uh, that I'm pointing now is about an hour. This one is I think less than 15 minutes. Um, so watch those if you want to, um, and uh, that's pretty much. And these are documents, uh, GitHub links, uh, many stuff that you will see. I haven't written any of this, so I just copy pasted from there. I edited some of this stuff, put more comments for people to understand, and um, and I'm I'm glad that you know I also was able to contribute to fix some of this stuff. I already submitted I think three. Uh, pull requests so far in their, you know, while I was preparing this talk, and minor things, nothing major that, that they didn't know that I know of. Um, and I also did uh, a couple of email exchanges to, to clarify a few things uh, because I thought those questions might come, uh, you know, during the talk. Um, and I have my contacts here, so I'm not, uh, in case if you want to give me more personal feedback, some people are not, um, you know, they just don't want to make a comment in front of everyone um, or, or, you know, follow up, right? Uh, which might also help me to to explore more and learn more. So that's pretty much about this. So let's, let's dive in. So I'm going to follow this, uh, whatever you see here. So they're all different notebooks. And at the end, I'll be talking about a new extension, which is still in preview. Uh, but if someone doesn't want to uh, write PowerShell and they say, uh, you know, I just want to do it from a from a GUI, right? So you also have that capability uh, using that ex this extension that I'll be talking about. Uh, but there'll be more coming after the meeting. Okay. Uh, so let's let's get used to so uh, get it started. So the first one I did is um, I loaded all these rules into a SQL Server table. You know, I'm primarily a operational DBA. SQL Server table is my favorite place to look at stuff. Um, so I thought, you know, we can look at some metadata or some metrics about this, right? What, what are these rules that, that I'm talking about, right? So I thought the best for me is because, you know, I do, I know this syntax, so it's easier for me instead of doing anything else. So, um, for some reason, uh, it says in the description is 204. When I took it from the CSV, I found 203. Of course, I didn't go and count it. Uh, but the, there's also a JSON file, you know, I, I'm planning to, if I have a little bit more time, I'm going to load the JSON uh, 
uh, file and then see if there is a missing record in the CSV. I already found some issue in the CSV, they're fixing it. Uh, so probably there's one missing, but not a big deal. I just wanted to show you that, um, you know, these are the 23 rule sets. So I'm just gonna take any five, right? Just top five. Um, there, these are not ordered just to see what kind of data is there, right? What, what what we are dealing with, just to give you an idea. So each rule has an ID and they have labels, right? And we'll look at some of the distinct values of this to see, you know, how many labels are there. Uh, and then they have a display name, uh, message. They also have a tag. So the tag is very useful. I can use this tag to run a subset of the rules. So when I will go to the demo, we'll see that I can pass this one of the tag and saying that only run the rules that has this particular tag, right? So like, I just want to check my backup. So there's a tag name backup or full backup. It will only check my, does it, you know, meet the criteria or the rule that's set for the full backup. So you have that advantage. This default rule set tag is in every rule in all 204. So this is by default is gonna run all 204. If you do not say anything, if you do not pass any predicate or filter, um, then there's a description. And these descriptions are pretty, um, you know, pretty elaborate. So if we do a new file, as you can see, right? It's pretty, pretty descriptive uh, what this rule is about. Uh, you know, and, and what this is going to do. I'm not going to read this. I just want to show this to you. And if that was not enough for any of us, this also has a link to the Microsoft documentation that what this rule is trying to check. Uh, probe, we'll talk about a little bit uh, later on. Uh, when I show you a demo, I think it will make more sense. I, uh, I struggled to find a simple English to explain this. I mean, probe, of course, you all of you know what's probe, but probe can be a very generic word in English and can mean many different things. Uh, target type, so, uh, you know, it's mostly database and server, platform Windows Linux. Uh, there's target engine edition because now we are also talking about managed instance and um, um, SQL server on uh, on VMs, right? And there are versions. So uh, there is, you don't see any 2008, of course, 2008 is deprecated uh, or not in, uh, you know, in support, uh, actually, there are other versions, 2016 just went out of mainstream uh, support just I think one or two weeks ago. Uh, but these rules start from 2012 and up and there are target name not in. So like this rule does not imply if you are running it against a system database. Right? So you might be running it against all database but this rule is not run for those databases. And um, uh, there are you know two more, I haven't looked at those two. Uh, there's mostly non-value. So this is just a overview of, you know, what these rules are and, and, and what they're doing. So let's look at some of the distinct values just to get some idea. Uh, so again, there are two different types. One is database scope, one is server scope. And again, we can run it in different format uh, in with different scope I'll show you. Uh, there is only two critical rules, uh, rule. Uh, there's, 22 information and warning 179. And you can use this also um, when you run this. You can say, just run the one with the information, run the one only with warning or just critical or otherwise by default it's gonna run for everything. So you have that, uh, that, uh, that capability also. Uh, as you can see here, this is one of the first one that I created a pull request because when I was looking at this, I noticed this was a mistake. There's extra colon here didn't make sense. So um, I haven't loaded it again. I loaded it like last week and then I start building this talk or I, um, I first started in a different machine. So this might have been fixed already. Uh, if you load the table uh, again, I, I, I'm not sure, but you should just see two of this record. So uh, I, again, I put a comment here. I did reach out to product team and they agree that there should not be any null values here and they're going to fix it in the next um, um, next release. Um, I, I, I did get an email about this. Um, so as you can see, like they'll fix it. So, and the next one is, okay. This is about the additions. Um, so the minimum, right, if you're running 2012, it will only run this. 
and then 2014 and 16, you know, they will also run the older ones and the newer ones. Uh, this is a very, you know, very subjective comment, right? My favorites, right? Um, and I probably, you know, I like I said, I've been using it for a few months. We are still tweaking. We're still doing, you know, some customization at my workplace. But some of these really help me, um, you know, especially if you look at this weak password. I love that one, login equals password. I love that one too. Uh, I, I do not find any of this in our production because production is pretty tightly controlled, but I would uh, sometimes find some of this stuff in our dev environment where, uh, you know, developers have more uh, access. And um, this, this, is, this is, you know, very helpful for us to, uh, to check. So again, I'm not going to read these rules to you. I just wanted to mention, I'm sure if you start using this and I'd love to hear back from you, right, you know, uh, if you, um, you know, if you have your, um, you know, your favorites. Yeah, I see like Ben put that uh, uh, link and that is actually one of the links that uh, probably here, I, that looks very familiar to me, yes. Uh, I think this is this one uh, that Ben, you put that one. So I put all those here, but that, that one is a good, and I'm gonna use uh, two, both the notebooks from there, Ben. And like I said, you know, I, I do not want to write stuff that someone uh, someone already wrote, right? And especially if the Microsoft engineers write this, I'd rather just use it. I did reach out to product team and ask their permission to use this for this talk. And they're absolutely thrilled. They said like, go ahead and, you know, get the word out uh, and let us know if you need help. So um, anyway, so, yeah, like some of this, you know, look at this one, like let us see, right? We are not, uh, you know, starting SQL uh, 20, you know, 2017 or 2019, no more service pack, it's all CU based, right? So um, I know there are other ways, right? You know, like previously we used to pull uh, from a website of Microsoft and dump it into the table because we have our SQL Server patching automated with the Windows patching. So we do match, you know, what is the current version of the dev and what is the current production? And that's how we release patches. But this one can give me a check if for some reason someone put an exception or the SCCM missed one of the servers for any reason, this will definitely tell us that we are not into the right patch level. So duplicated feature, if you're doing upgrade, uh, you know, nice one that will tell you that if you carried some of this stuff that Microsoft doesn't want you, of course, Microsoft never get rid of those. I know we all know that. <laughs> They'll always put that comment, but uh, anyway. So, uh, you know, these are some of mine's, but, um, you know, I just want to put that out. So let's, and please, if you have any question, uh, put it there. I'm looking at the chat also, and yeah, can you stop me? Justin, can you stop me? Uh, I'd rather uh, have a conversation than just, you know, uh, saying what I want to say. So. I wouldn't mind at all if you stop me and uh, we can have a conversation, so. So we looked at that. Quick start, I'm not gonna run this one. If someone- I actually do have a question. Can I ask sure. really fast? So yes, you listed yes. out in the, in the last screen, you did list out that those were your favorites. Are there more that are available that you can put in and you've just picked your favorite ones or? Are oh yes, ones? I just okay. said, you know, these are my favorites, but uh, uh, there are 203, nothing is stopping you from Ooh. use all. Okay. Or 204, sorry, I should, uh, I, I, I really have to uh, double check that one number description, otherwise it's going to bother me. But yes, you can run all. I'm just saying, um, you know, uh, we dump it and I'll show you the way we do it across, uh, I cannot give you a number, but, uh, you know, yeah. across hundreds of instances, I can say, tell you that. And the way we do it, and I have a uh, notebook for just to show you, and I'll tell you that I just want to build it up and then show you how you can take this and implement this in a larger state at your workplace. Uh, uh, and, you know, how do we monitor this? Are we making progress? We are, you know, all that. So, yes, I just, just showing you like some of this, like, you know, login and password is same, right? Yeah. People do it like de developers in a rush, right? Getting error message, you know, okay, let's just quickly create a username and a login, right? And then go and or a weak password, CU level. So, uh, you know, some of those I like, like, you know, like deprecated features. Um, you know, they all give me, you know, like good insights. So I just wanted to mention that. And I'm sure, you know, when you implement this, you'll find your favorites, you know, based on your environment. Perfect, thank you. The next one, I'm not gonna run this, but if someone thinks, you know, once you download this, uh, and this one, I haven't done anything. This is same as the, the link that Ben sent. Um, uh, I just said, you know, I copied it from here. I wanna make sure people know that I didn't write this. This one, um, if you do not have time for the next one, which is the 
core of this talk. That's one. That one is very long. If you say I do not have time to go through all this, but I still I'm interested to see how this thing works. Uh, look at that's what this one because that's why this one is called quick start. So this is just two commands. Um, you know, there's a couple of few things, and there are again links to the some of the same stuff. So I'm not going to run this one because uh, whatever is in this notebook is really uh, included in here. Uh, so before we get going, I just want to mention that if, you, if you're not familiar with, you see this kernel, uh, this is uh, all PowerShell commands. Of course, you can run tSQL with PowerShell command that is allowed in a PowerShell kernel, but there are other languages, like I was saying, get supported with the Azure Data Studio. And there are many, many uh, you know, awesome speakers, uh, community members, Microsoft engineers talked about notebooks. So if you go and search, you will see uh, this is getting really uh, made our life a lot easier in many aspects, uh, especially even Microsoft now. If you go to um, there's a URL where Bakudi and uh, uh, you know all, they keep all their resources, you will see a bunch of notebooks. So what Tiger Team is trying to do, uh, or, or the Cat Team, they are putting all their troubleshooting scripts in notebook and they want to share it with the community they said you know you guys go and troubleshoot like the way we do and even microsoft you know in the last uh, uh, sql pass they're talking about even within the microsoft engineers in the cat team they all had their scripts in their own places right uh, and uh, they they didn't have like a central place to share it so now they're trying to you know create notebooks all of them are doing it in the same way and one of the advantage that or, or that i use in my team is if we have a problem, we have certain notebooks, we run this and we save it with the result. So the next day, if you're getting called at two o'clock in the morning, the next day you get up and look at what was that setting that I changed and fixed it, right? You forget. So we save it with the results so we know what is the pre and post state. So that's enough about notebook. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Um, and and please you know, look at the chat. Ben is putting some interesting stuff there. Um, so, and you know, th those are also, yeah, the, the 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 Visual Studio Code is another tool that definitely a lot richer than this one, so has more capabilities. Uh, again, I said you know I copied this from here, and I modified it, and the modification percent is probably very less. Uh, most of is is the is the original statement, so I absolutely you know reinforce it that I did not write this from scratch. Uh, these are the two PowerShell commands. These are part of now SQL Server um, uh, module. Uh, I did edit the link. It was not there in the comments. So if you want to read more about these two comments, if you click this two, this will take you directly to the Microsoft documentation. Uh, there is some setup uh, instructions. Make sure if you do not do this, the following commands will not run. But if you already have a SQL Server module uh, in the machine that you are running, you should be good to go. So um, like in this case, it's probably, uh, yeah. So it says that, you know, I already have this version of the module. So. Um, one, when you run this, um, you will get these two warnings, depending on the scope you are running. And the reason you get this, so when I first got this, I was not 100% sure why I was getting this, but then I kind of had an idea, but then I also confirmed it. And this is a extract from the email with the product team. Uh, most of us probably have XP command shell turned off. Uh, for a valid reason. So if you have that turned off, which is the best practice, um, then you will get this warning. And as you see, if you read this, I'm not gonna read this, uh, they are gonna change this to uh, using .NET APIs. So in future, even if you have XP command shell turned off, you should still be able to run those those rules uh, that for that mentioned here. I just wanna make it clear in case if you see this. So a lot of this, you will see many options. I'm not gonna run this uh, based on your test, your choice. Uh, you can use any of this. They all will, are going to give you same result set. Uh, I'm using a local instance in this laptop. So if I lose internet or anything, you know, I do not have any, any problem. I do uh, have a, uh, some stuff in Azure that I'll show you if time, time permits. So this is, we are running in a server scope. As you see, it's my local instance 2019. And I'm then calling that one of the partial function that I talked about, right? So let's go. So this will run all the rules 
that is server scopes. I'm not going to really focus on individual rules, right? Because that will be a long, long talk. Uh, but I'm just trying to give you enough um, idea that how you can implement this at your place. And then, you know, you can choose which rules you want to run, which one you want to turn off, which one you want to edit or modify and whatnot. So, okay, that's taking a little bit longer. Okay, good. So as you can see, it says, you know, this is my target path. This is my instance name. And, um, you know, these are the rules that it ran, right? So I'm just going to get rid of the output so I can move next. So there are, it moves to the next, it skips a bunch of sections once I delete the output, which I don't like. So all these are similar scope, similar instance, but it's just a different flavor of the same command. Um, so I'm not going to run all this uh, because that, uh, you know, that'll be pretty boring and there's no reason to hold all of you here. This is a SQL server running on Azure VM. And if I will bring this to just show you, um, I just spin this up with the SQL assessment resource group. As you can see, I have a SQL virtual machine running SQL 2019. And if I want to run this against that, you probably, if you're running it in your corporate environment, I'm sure you're not going to use your IP address. You'll probably have private endpoint uh, and you don't expose this IP to the whole world, a public IP address. Uh, so uh, don't think that I'm going to run this you know, in production like this. Uh, we use private endpoint for all our, uh, uh, you know, stuff. So, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just, just, you know, showing it as an example. Um, this one has a couple of rules uh, that doesn't apply to on-premises instances. And as you see here, uh, I got this warning, right? Because I have XP command shell uh, turned off in that by default. And that's why it could not run some of this stuff. Um, and there are a couple of uh, rules that, that uh, uh, especially if it sees, I think, based on your database size and the VM size and all that, I think that there are some rules that will flag those, just so you know. Um, so we looked at a server scope. Now moving to a database scope. Um, here, before I was getting the SQL instance, instead of that, I'm just getting a database, right? And in this case, I put the name and this will only run against master database, right? I'm running it against one database only. So the scope is just master database. And it will tell you every time you run this at the top, what's your target path, right? It clearly says that this is the instance and I'm running it against the master database. And if we move that, you know, I have some of Brent Roser's stuff in master database, it doesn't like it. Uh, so <laughs> I know, and this is in my laptop. So, uh, and we were just talking about right why some companies doesn't like it. So they're following best practices. Uh, this is a user database. Uh, this is a Microsoft uh, wide world importer uh, that, it will probably run a few more rules because this is a user database, not a system database, right? Uh, you can do that. And again, you know, I put the database name here. If you don't know, like this, you can do it this way also, um, you know, uh, traversing the path and getting to the database and then you can call the invoke SQL uh, assessment. And just different flavor, like same as the server scope that we saw before. Now, if you, want to run this against all your databases, right? You say, I do not want to uh, filter or I do not want to run against one database, uh, then you don't, let me get rid of the output so I don't have to scroll that much. And let me go back to the, oh, it's still running. I didn't realize that, sorry. Okay, so it's done. So let me get rid of that. If you want to run it against all your databases, uh, you know, here I do not have any filter. So if I run this, this will go through every database and it will run it. Now, so far we haven't been filtering on the rules, right? 
we just uh, filtering on our scope, whether it's a server scope, system database, all database, uh, individual user database. Uh, so next I'm gonna to move to how can I filter or narrow the scope of the rules. Um, and you can combine both, right? Now you know how to narrow the scope of your target. And next I'll show you how we can narrow the scope of you know, what we are running. So how can I just run a single rule or a set of rule based on tag? Uh, and, and there are a couple of other options. So I'll show you that once this one finishes. Uh, okay, so no comments yet other than Ben put some uh, useful links. So if you have any, please questions, comments. I'm, uh, I'm definitely looking for feedback. As I said, this is my first time presenting this. So put your uh, comments over there or if any questions, if you don't want to speak up or probably you cannot unmute. So just put it there and then we can definitely talk about those, so. I know people are super excited for when you post the notebooks. So um, we will be putting those on the meetup page for today's meeting. I'll just, I'll edit the meetup later so you can go and review this meetup. We'll also put the link to this presentation there too so that um, it's all in one place. Sure. And we can send out an email once they're up as well. Awesome. Okay, so probably not a good idea to run this next time for all databases because um, uh, maybe I should just stop this. You get the idea. So let's get rid of this and let's move on. So I don't want people to. Uh, so now we will be, you know, uh, looking at scopes, right? So this one, as you can see, I'm just, I'm not going to run this. I just want to see what rules apply to this scope, right? So there's two main command. One is invoke and one is get SQL assessment item. But we can combine these two and I'll show that. So here, I'm not running anything. I'm just want to see, I just want to see what rules apply to this scope. Uh, that's all I'm looking at. And now here, I narrowed the scope or I changed the scope to master database, right? Again, it's the same deal. I want to see what rules apply to master database. And here, if you see, I talked about how I can control warning information and critical, right? So here I'm saying, you know, I just want to see the rules that are warning. And you see this both, right? With this scope though, the scope is a database. And if I change this, put this in a comment, means those two critical ones really doesn't apply to a user database scope, right? That's why we do not get any output. Uh, now, if I just want to check with the trace flag, so trace flag is a tag. And so you can see, I can look at it with severity. I can pass a tag. I can also, uh, I did had one with the ID probably. I, let me, I'll, I'll look at it. Uh, I can also check by the ID, right? Uh, or I can narrow it. So this is saying, give me all the rules that has a tag with trace flag. There are a bunch of those. So, and we are not running this at this time. Now next, you know, how can I run a specific rule, right? So this is the ID of a rule. If you go to that rules table that I talked about, if you say, you know, equals ID, ID equals this. This is the rule we are looking at. And here, what we are doing, we are actually running this. So here I'm using invoke SQL assessment. This is my scope of our target scope. And I'm saying, just run this one rule for me. Now, I'm probably complying with this rule. That's the, I'm not seeing anything. So let me bring my management studio for a minute here. I can do it also in Azure Data Studio. I don't need to go there, but I was, I just had it open. So I'm just gonna, let's turn this on. Run this again. Yes. So they're saying, you know, we should keep it disabled. Now I turn it on. That's when it's giving me an output. And I'm sure if we, you know, let me turn this off just so I'm in, in my base. So you get the idea. Uh, this is the ID but now I'm using a tag. So this will probably run multiple rules. Anything has a backup tag, right? So, you know, some of these, 
I have outdated transaction log. Uh, I have full backup warning. I haven't taken it uh, in last seven days. Um, and this is for, you know, it checks for other stuff too. And um, later on I have, I'll show you, um, say I did not like the seven day rule. How can I modify this to a three day rule, right? In case, uh, just for an example. So we'll, we'll look at some of those. Uh, here, I'm getting my item and I'm also running those. So I'm combining these two commands. First, I get the items that I want, and then I can pass those to the Invoke SQL assessment. And this is probably another one. It's probably gonna run all the rules at a server scope. Yeah, I do not have any, any other filter here. Actually, I have a grid output. I didn't realize this. So this is, you know, the output is here. Once I close this, now it's going to, uh, it's going to run this. So, and I'm going to stop it here. Now, getting a little bit into practical use, right? We're not going to run this in a UI, looking at it and forget about it, right? Um, how can we take some actions? Uh, so this is one of this flatten output, what it does, it lets you pretty much write this output into a SQL Server table, which many of us, I think, will be more comfortable than anything else. Um, it also has a date timestamp. I'll show you the result output later on. So what I can do now, if I schedule this, I can run it today, and I can start from the CBRT level, right, or my important servers, fix some of those, and the result is going to get appended next time I run this, and then I can compare. Um, some people created a small BI, you know, um, dashboard, Power BI. Um, I'm still, uh, you know, SSRS reports is still my strength. Uh, so I might have some reports seeing, okay, last time I had uh, so many uh, number of warnings, and this week I fix them. And maybe, you know, some of you can take some, you know, credit showing it to your boss, right? Uh, give them a Power BI dashboard that they can refresh and they can see, oh no, the team is working. So this is how you'll probably, or I have done it. I'll show you a little bit more details about that uh, that you can write the results set, right? So uh, let me, I ran it a few times. So I don't want to, you know, uh, run this and, and take more of your uh, time. So I even ran it a few times today Oh, it's right here, yeah. So as you can see here, uh, you know, it writes out everything with the timestamp here. So as you can see, I moved to this machine on 711. So it's been five days and I ran it, you know, a few times. Uh, and now I can, you know, I have my target path, right? So I can group by here, you know, looking at my warnings, CBRT and you know what I mean, and see, you know, if I'm making some progress or the team is making progress, so, you know, we are stale or not. So uh, that's how, you know, you probably practical use. Uh, that's really smart. Cause then you can like show your boss, hey, look, these are the best practices that we weren't meeting before, but are now meeting. Here's how much more we need to do. And, and if there's a lot there, maybe that's how you can justify another team member or something like that. Yeah, there was a, um, you know, I forget all the details. So Microsoft had another initiative that you could put in an agent and it will collect all this and, um, you know, um, and it will list all this. You could assign actually people to different tasks. But I think that was too cumbersome. I don't know if that's a, that's an offshoot from that project, uh, but I did a pilot with Microsoft on the other project. Uh, it was just too cumbersome to implement. This looks a lot easier than that. And I totally agree with you uh, that, uh, you know, this is a way to keep track of, you know, um, whether, you know, you're making progress or not. Um, so we'll be moving to, uh, to the every day and see if you're, yeah. Yeah, and Ben said, you know, you can run it every day. There's nobody stopping you, right? And like, uh, and you can purge your table, right? If you think, you know, it's getting too big, right? You can just keep the last, you know, whatever days, months you want. And uh, 
Uh, ben also said having it in a table also lets you trend how you're doing exactly. Uh, so if you have SSRS report or you know, Power BI, um, or, or you know old style, you know um, you know Excel pivot table, right? So take the results that I used to do before. You know, copy it, put it in uh, Excel, uh, and then you know you put a chart with a the dark theme. You send it. People think, gosh, like you know these are genius. Right? That was my best tool, and I always tell my my team that you know DBA should be good at aggregation and some visualization, right? Because bosses doesn't want to read our tables, all the data. You put it in a in a graph with some trend line, uh, with some fancy dark theme. They think like you know this is the best team. They're working the hardest, and uh, and yes, we do. But uh, also a smart way. So what Ben said, yes, you know you can trend it, and um, you know uh, and you can show people that yes, you know you are making some progress. So let's move to customization, right? So far, what we have seen that. Uh, we just ran standard rules. And I'm sure, you know, this is not going to fit everybody, right? Um, you have edge cases, you have different requirements. Um, so how do we customize this for us, right? Um, so this is, I'm just going to set a couple of variables here and I'm going to use those, right? So these are just my databases. Um, and now I'm checking the full backups, right? This is a tag. I'm, uh, this is a tag or an ID probably because both you can pass in the check. As you can see, it says, you know, of course it doesn't imply to TEMDB and model is smart enough. I don't need to take full backup, but it says, you know, everything is over seven days. Now, I might say, you know, my company, I need to take full backup every three days, just throwing a number, you know, I'm not suggesting anything. So please don't focus on the inside the rule, just try to get the idea. Now, I'm putting a path where I'm gonna have my customized scripts, right? Because it needs to know where is my customized script. So this is where my customized scripts are. And now I have full backup override, right? Dot JSON. So let's look at that file, right? Let's see what this is. So, and like I said, I'm gonna you know put all this in my GitHub. So I'm saying this is a rule, but my type is override. This is the ID of that check, and I'm just overriding the threshold to three days. As simple as that. So let's go back here. Let's run this. See now it's checking against three days, right? Now someone might say, no, I, it doesn't fit me. I need some for seven days, some for three days, right? Based on whatever, or I need a mix of this, right? So I have another one. I said, I only want to check for this database. This one I want for three days, rest all should remain seven days. And, you know, I'm not a, I always say I'm not a smart person, but I know a couple of smart people. So if you are, uh, if you need, you can actually pass, um, uh, gosh, I'm blanking right now, uh, regular expression uh, here. And there's the example, if you watch that video that I gave link, uh, uh, you know, um, they actually use uh, regular expression. And this always remind me, uh, the owner of Minion, uh, uh, you know, they're from Texas. Um, you know, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, anyway, he's a master of the regular expression. He has a bunch yes, of talks. Ben and Sean McGowan. Ben and Sean Excellent. McGowan, yep. Uh, thank you, thank you, yes. Yeah, so if you need help with that, please reach out, not me. <laughs> I'm, I always get impressed with his, uh, you know, regular expression skill. I'll be honest with you. I've seen he's a master of this. I'm sure many of you are too. I'm not. Anyway, so let's look at this now. So now see this one is checking against three days, right? And the rest is still checking against seven days. Right? Makes sense. So uh, this is how you can do customization. Uh, how can I disable or enable rules, right? So again, I'm setting up some stuff and uh, I'll be honest with you, this folder is actually in the GitHub link. 
I pretty much copy pasted. I probably changed maybe less than 1%. So I haven't written any of this. I copied it as is, and I'm just using it. So again, I put in here, copy the files from here. Again, I absolutely want to make it clear. Um, so nobody should think that, uh, you know, I did any of this. Okay, so this is a disable rule. So what it's saying, run all this. What happened? Okay, sorry. So I do not want to run this rule, right? So I want to turn it off as you can see here. So next time when I'm going to run my assessment, it is not going to check against this rule. So you can do that. If there is a rule that you want to turn off, uh, you can absolutely do that. Uh, where did I go create a new rule? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, if you want to disable all trace flag rules, right? You can do that too. So let's look at that. Disable all TF JSON, uh, open file. And I, uh, I'm not going to, I put that in a separate folder because I'm not going to put those up in my GitHub. There's no reason because already someone has that. Microsoft has it. So I'm just going to, that's why I refer it because I really do not see, because if I copy, you know, they make some updates, uh, you will miss out. So uh, that's why I did not put that uh, in my, um, in here. So this is all, you know, this put the ID override enable equal false, that's it. Uh, so this, uh, the reason I put, I'm showing this, so this gives you an example, if you need to disable some particular rule, disable a whole tag uh, or category, whatnot, uh, you know, look at the samples and you can, you know, definitely take advantage of those. Uh, this one is more interesting. This one is saying first, I'm disabling all trace flag, but then I'm saying enable the trace flags that's related to performance. So, you know, a little bit advanced. So um, again, you know, you can look at that and then you can see like, you know, uh, which one got, you know, it's a mixed match, right? It's true, it's false. So based on, so it first disabled all and then enabled the one that's related to performance. So uh, pretty interesting uh, example here. How do I create new rule, right? I might want to create new rule that um, that you know that is not there out of this 204. And again, um, I did not write this. Um, so if we look at custom TSQL probe, this one is doing some stuff with um, uh, disk space, right? So maybe we should look at it. No, I open the wrong one, sorry. Why does it go there? So as you see, it's looking at the, the, the free space and um, you know, it has, that. that's pretty much right. So, you know, we, we, you know, I'm sure all of you have this in some format to warn you, right? If someone is filling up disks or some process, right? Uh, so, let's get rid of this. Okay. So let's run this. And as you see here, the threshold is set to 25%. And you can, if you want to change that, say I want to use this rule, but I want to override this threshold. There is another file here, custom threshold. There is a, a typo in this. Uh, uh, there is a, you know, it says 50, it should have says 0 0.50. Uh, so you can do that. So you can write your own rule and then you can customize that based on your need, right? For different environments that we saw before. 
Now, so far what we have seen either it's by Microsoft and um, written in T-SQL, but you know, uh, like I said, if it's Ben, Ben will probably say, I want to write in PowerShell. Uh, some, or also .NET is Ben's strength, I know that. So there are probes or rules that you can write. Yes, Ben said, yes, I will. <laughs> so uh, if you want to use Command Shell, PowerShell, using registry, WMI, uh, these are four different examples. And like I said, I haven't written any of this. I just copied it. Uh, but they are pretty interesting if you open these files and look at it, right? So uh, maybe we, you know, but if we run this, right, say, and once you create a probe, uh, you can use that probe in a in a in a in a different rule. You can uh, you know refer uh, to this probe. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So you can you can keep using it uh, in in your other rules. I might not have. I think I know the problem. So let me. I do have a file to. I think my XP command shell is turned off, so that can be a reason. Yep, so don't do this, just, uh, just for demo purposes, okay. Okay, so it did run. So as you can see, um, you know, there are some file is checking. It has a setting of if any files more than one meg is probably just for an example purpose, it will warn us. It's probably, um, you know, not, a, not very useful uh, for me at this point. But uh, if you open that file, probably will give you some idea how you can write different ones uh, using different, you know, languages or different products. Um, if you want to write your own rules, right? It's probably still running. So my first lesson is some of this, uh, I'm still probably in my prepare mode. I was so intensely involved, I have to probably make note which one not to run during a, a presentation. Sorry about that. So, okay, so this one finished. Anyway, so I'm not going to open all this, but uh, but do, do take a look. Um, and if you are um, doing a CLR one, uh, there are some instructions because you have DLLs that you have to unblock uh, if you want to get this going, right? Um, and again, there are some useful links. So, uh, and yeah, how many more minutes I have? I just want to make sure I respect time and... So, um, we we can go until 4.30. So, you, you have 25 minutes if you want it, but you awesome. don't have to use all that because that's... Okay. Okay, that gives me more than enough that I need to... Uh, so this is one that I was talking to you that you can combine uh, with DBA tools. And I'm sure um, um, hopefully you use a register server or what we call central management server to keep track of all your servers or, you know, it has other uses, right? You can run scripts, collect data and all that. I do use at my workplace. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, if you just have a table, uh, you can use that and pass that. Um, so here you get all your server name, you pass it to, uh, you know, and then you run through this for each, uh, for all your servers, and then you run whatever you want to run, and then flatten out, put it into a table, right? And then if you want to, I also added some command, if you, these are, you know, nothing fancy. If you say, I just want to keep it for seven days, you can change this to make it one year, two year, whatever you want to do. And then we have archive table, we move everything to archive. We have one table that just, you know, um, staging table. And uh, most of our archive tables in the DBA environment is uh, compressed. That's why we put it there. And then you can have a Power BI report or SSRS report. You can do whatever you want to, to report, report see how good, bad you are doing or what's the current uh, status, right? Especially if you go to like, if you're a consultant, you go to new places. Yeah, you just want to get a feeling of how good or bad the environment. So this is what it is now. So far, what we have sh I've shown you, 
um, all will need some typing, right? So, but now if any of you say no, uh, I do not like any of this. I'm not going to type, show me something else. So for those folks, there is a new extension and Azure Data Studio and um, as Ben mentioned, Visual Studio Code are based on extensions. Means you just install, it's a very lightweight tool, but then you can add in extensions based on whatever you are doing. Like as you see in the bottom of my screen, I don't know if you can see that this says SQL Sentry Plan Explorer. That's the third party extension that I loaded because I love their Plan Explorer, I use it. Uh, so you can uh, put in other extensions. So there is extension for the SQL assessment uh, that uh, still is in preview, just so you know. And so once you have that loaded and enabled, you do not have to do anything that I showed you for last one hour. <laughs> but then of course, uh, you know, uh, you cannot run it in 200 servers in one go. You cannot do some of this stuff that I showed you. So if we go to manage, you will see a button here with a SQL assessment. If we click this and let's get some real estate here. Now I can say invoke assessment. I can also I'm surprised that these are not being populated. Okay, sorry, that's after the result, sorry. So I'm gonna run this and now it's without typing any PowerShell command, I'm doing the invoke assessment. Uh, once I have the result set, if I want to filter it by database server, individual database or by severity, I can filter it from here. I can also view the rules. Uh, so now, okay, it's still loading. It should show us the databases also. And I can create HTML report. This will be another cool one if you want to impress someone, create HTML report, print it in PDF, and then send it as an attachment. Like they will think like you spend the whole night, you know, what overnight just to get this, right? <laughs> Not with just five clicks or, uh, people just love those. Uh, this also takes you to the GitHub link that we have in many places uh, in my notebooks. Um, so I'm not going to, and oh, one cool thing is here. Uh, if you are setting is this up first time, uh, I like this because, um, okay, I probably should delete some of my databases next time I present this uh, in my test environment. So it's a little bit faster. Uh, sorry about that. This actually gives you the table definition. And, uh, you know, so you do not have to, um, you know, find that out. Also on the history tab, when we are here, uh, whatever you run, you can always go back to look at your old reports. It keeps, uh, okay, so this is the one that I was talking about. So this will create the table, put the whole result set of your assessment into that table. Um, as you know, you just connect to whatever instance you want, and then it will do that for you. Um, so let me go back to my extension. No, this is not. Okay, we are here. What happened now? Oh, because I clicked this. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing this. Anyway. Um, so these are all, oh, okay. Okay, these are all the rules got applied. Let me, yeah, now you can filter by your database, uh, you know, uh, whatever you want. If you want to filter by your, uh, you know, information warning critical, uh, and then uh, we can go back and look at this again, right? From, from different runs. But one thing I didn't, understand why this got great because I already clicked it or let me see. 
No, it did not. Okay. I'm going to take that a look. So, so this is what it is. You can use this uh, if you really do not want to, uh, you know, type any partial. So let's go back to this. So that's yeah, assessment. So that's all I have actually. Uh, I do not have anything else. So again, I really, really appreciate if you put some feedbacks or sent to me personally. Uh, one of the takeaway for me is I should uh, delete some of my database from my test instance and uh, do not run the commands that go against all the databases probably, or just reduce the database set. I don't like people watching the wheel turning. And I'll see why I could not get to that HTML. Why did it grade out? Um, maybe I can just do it once. Maybe then I have to go from history, but I'm not 100% sure. But even if I open it now, I cannot send it to HTML format anymore, or maybe I can, I just have to figure that out. Not 100% sure. This is awesome. This is so cool. Like when you said, you don't have to run it in PowerShell. I went, oh, <laughs> so I'm really excited to play with this now and watching you play. So I have not been great at using Azure Data Studio and watching you play in here and all your notes in the notebooks kind of gets me excited. And I'm like, oh goodness, now I'm going to have to go um, play in Azure Data Studio and like get all this figured out because this is awesome. And I've I'm loving this assessment. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Does anybody, you guys, uh, Ben's like, notebooks rock. <laughs> I like, guess they, they do, apparently. And I've been, I'm in yeah. the past. I need to move forward. Um, <laughs> lots of people saying thank you in the chat. So huge, huge, huge thank you. This is awesome. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anything that they want to ask? Right now is a great time to ask questions on all, all this amazing content. Or feedback, or, yeah. or feedback. I said fame many times, I'm sorry, because I'm presenting <laughs> this for first time. So I really want to see, you know, what people think. Was it useful, not useful? And what, what can I do to improve when I do it next time? So so the piece that I really loved was when you um, were showing how to add the filters in and how you added the threshold overrides um, with the dates. That was super useful to me so that, you know, when you um, actually ran it and showed the differences. I thought that was fantastic. So I would I would love to have just a little bit more of a deep dive on on those towards the beginning because that came up later in the presentation, which was so good. But just a little bit more of that at the beginning would be awesome because at first you were um, clicking through a bunch of different stuff and I wasn't quite sure uh, what it was doing, what it was supposed to do. And but as you you like kind of brought it all together at the end, and I was like, oh, okay, so it clicked. So for me, that was good. Do, does, does other people have feedback, things that were helpful to you, things that um, you'd love to see more of with this presentation? I'd like to see more of the, the kinds of warnings and the things that it assesses. So talk about a little bit more about the, the rule set. Maybe just like show us kind of like, here's, here's what some of those rules are and here's how you fix them. But not too much. Okay. Like we yeah. don't need to. No, maybe I should take my, my favorites, right? And run yeah. some of those yeah. and then, uh, you know, show those. And uh, yeah, yeah, that can be a good, you know, probably a few, maybe three, four. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was really cool when you were turning the trace flag on and off and showing us how it showed up and how it disappeared when yeah. you were running those back and forth. That was cool. Yeah. I didn't want to go to the rule set because I first thought because that can lead to you know, different discussion because people might have a strong yeah, opinion yeah. based on their environment. But there are some general, I think, good practice rules that everyone agrees, like password is not equal to login. And maybe I can, you know, create one of those and show those, right? Hey, this is what it's finding out. Uh, maybe some of those, but I, I like that feedback. Maybe, you know, probably add a few more minutes on that, not go too deep because, uh, you know, diving into the rule sets can be a you know, it can take me to a different path. So that, thank you, Jonathan, for that feedback. I'm yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need definitely. to be a deep dive, just like a two minute tour. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna incorporate that. So thank you. And Andy, you are saying maybe show one of the customization a little bit earlier yeah. to get attention, um, okay. Yeah, because seeing the example that you showed was fantastic because I was like, Oh, okay. I see. That's how the override piece works. And that's, that's how that threshold becomes important and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. And I, and I loved when you were flipping back and forth between management studio and Azure data studio, because I, 
for me, management studio is my safe place. Um, so <laughs> when I'm like, oh, I recognize this. So when you're turning stuff on and off in management studio and making those changes and then coming back and showing here how it's affecting uh, the output of the assessment, I thought that was brilliant because I'm like, oh, here's how it all connects. And so that was cool to me. Um, yeah, Mark says nearly all this is new. So yeah. Ben, I did not understand your comment. So if you can mute, unmute maybe enabling PowerShell notebooks would be a good item in the presentation as it trips the people new to notebooks. Okay. Yeah. So by default, when you, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So by default, when you uh, just install Azure Data Studio, oh, okay. the notebooks aren't enabled for PowerShell. T-SQL is, Spark is, uh, but as soon as you go to PowerShell notebooks, it kind of hangs there. If you try to open up a PowerShell notebook, it goes, I'm not sure what you're talking about. And then you'll get the loading kernels and it will just stay there and do nothing. So it's showing how to do that. Like on the main page saying new notebook, and then you say PowerShell and it goes, oh, oh you don't have it. So let's set you up. Okay. And, then, and then choosing the don't don't use an existing power. Uh, uh, don't use an existing version of Spark, but let it do a new one, and then you're golden. It'll Spark. install Python for you. It'll do all that stuff, and then once that's done and it's finished, now you have access to PowerShell notebooks, and that kills people in my precons and all the stuff that I do for PowerShell. They go, I I tried to open up the notebook and it just won't work, and it's true. It it, it won't because it's not there by default. So maybe adding a description instead of doing it in front of everyone? Is that something you Yeah, would... just steps to, to just okay. hear the screenshots. It. Here's what you do. Here's what you do for screenshots so that Got they it. can see what you'd see because you're going to already have it set up because you're demoing, right? So you, you're not going to be able to show them again. No. But, but having that in there with screenshots going, if awesome. you click here, this is what you'll see. This is what you'll see. Awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. That, you know, this is what I was looking for because, um, yeah. Happy late birthday, Ben. Maybe right. a couple other things you might consider is like when you do your counts, maybe put bar charts in there so you so there's a little bit of graphics in there like that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe other people don't care about this, but if you did like a pivot table or something like that, where you say, here's your databases at the top, you know, you obviously you couldn't go out more than 10 or so, but Maybe you pick your 10 Vegas and which rules or which um, rules were affected for each one. Right. Yeah, and uh, Notebooks actually has a built in another extension for graphs. Um, uh, maybe I can use that instead of going anywhere else and, you know, like a pivot table. Uh, I can uh, get some uh, practice here. I know that extension, I have it enabled, I haven't played with it much. Um, um, so yeah, so thank you. So maybe, okay, yeah, show some graphics uh, just to, so that people, okay, good. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'm, I have my sticky notes covering my monitor bottom. So thank you. I don't wanna discourage any other feedback because this is like, I, I'm, our group is awesome. They all work together and help you and build each other. And that's one of the things I'd love about the, about our user group. And so um, I think you might've picked a really good one to start off with, because like this information's fantastic. And so I, I love this presentation. And so I'm really excited to see the additional stuff that you're going to add to it too. So. No, like I said, you know, I really didn't uh, pick you and I have a lot of respect for you. I said <laughs> at the beginning, I submitted yeah. in a few places. I'm like, whoever is going to pick this up first, uh, you know, I just have to be like, you know, give me feedback. So uh, if you see my, in my, uh, you know, in my blog post, there are a few other places I already have this schedule. And it's just, I was submitting all over. I'm like, because unless someone pick up, I don't have that to make it to the finish line, right? So yeah. I was really like last weekend and even today, just up to the minute. If you see my modified file date time, you will see that just like five minutes before us, I was working on it. So, I, but, I totally can relate. And so, but what I'm saying is that like, we love to help people. And so we're thrilled that you let us that. be the, the original. So thank you. <laughs> no, I, I truly appreciate that. Thank you. These are all, all nice feedback and I'm sure I'll be spending some time on those. So. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to go ahead and let you wrap up and uh, I'm going to stop the recording so that we can um, start getting that 
um, ready to go. So 